What's up guys? It's Chris from Condition One Group. Today we're gonna go over rifle setups. I'm gonna start at the front. I run a Dead Air Sandman K and also run Sandman S at work. I'm running the Mod Light with the PLH V2 head, the Reptilia mount for the m -lock rail, and the back button adapter for the Surefire pad. It's a on-off constant, and then the tape switch is the momentary on-off for the light. I prefer not having tape switches for lasers. They seem to fail a lot. Um, and my big hands actually wrap around this perfectly. It's just very ergonomic for the way I run this rifle. I'm running a Wilcox Raid X laser with the emissary handbrake. Back on the optic, this is the Scalar Works 193 mount with the Aimpoint RDS, which recently came out and we've been testing. So far, so good. It's very, very nice. The only uh, thing to talk about is how high it sits because it's a little bit different than the T2. So with the 193 and the RDS combined, it's about what you'll see on a Unity riser with a T2. So just something to keep in mind, if you were to put this on a Unity, it's gonna sit up extra high. I run Ambi selector and Ambi charging handle. I mount my sling back on the back right side of the buttstock, but I use a QD because sometimes I'll run it up here for working special events and certain operations. It cinches a little bit closer to my body for that. And then these Cobalts come with B5 furniture, so we get the B5 pistol grip and the B5 buttstock. The rifle's got a 12.5 inch Roscoe barrel, which prior to having a red dot on, I ran a one to 10 scoped optic on and was able to hit out to 700 yards very easily. So it's a very capable platform. This rifle can do a lot and it's definitely capable of reaching out far if you needed to. And for trigger, I run the Trigger Tech Combat Trigger. It's a five pound trigger. I just prefer the flat face triggers. If you have any questions, please visit our website or send us a message and we'll get back to you.